Right, so this is number 1A on our class starter, and we've already got a head start on it. We've got all of our possible rational roots listed. Uh, we've determined that negative 1 is one of the zeros that are one of the values that cause us to get a remainder of 0. And so, therefore, as I'm listing my zeros, then negative 1 is one of them. And then uh, I've done synthetic division one time, and that's caused me now to get a quadratic, and my quadratic would be 2x squared plus 3x minus 9. And if I want to find the remaining zeros, I'm going to set that equal to 0. And is that factorable? Yes? Good. So what does it factor into? x plus 3 and 2x minus 3. So what are your other zeros? Negative 3 and positive 3 halves. Okay. So actually when you know, we had our list of possible rational roots, we could have chosen to use either negative 3 or 3 halves where we chose negative 1. We would have gotten a different quadratic, but from that quadratic we would have gotten negative 1 and the, uh, and the third uh, rational root. So, you know, it really didn't matter which of those three that we chose. Uh, it eventually would allow us to get all three of those solutions. So those are our three roots for this polynomial. Everybody good on part A? Part B. How many times am I going to have to do some data division here? Twice. All right, we're dealing with a degree four. And so we'll have to start by uh, doing that division once, get me to x cubed, then again, get me to x squared. Go ahead and set up my synthetic division. I know that I want to get a remainder of zero. Uh, but I've got to pick a number, or find the number to use. So we're going to identify all of our possible rational roots. What are the factors of p? One. Two, four, five, ten, and twenty. What are the factors of Q? One. So actually, this is uh, that listing of all the factors of P are our possible rational roots. So that's going to be the numbers that we're going to choose from to figure out which one's going to give me a remainder zero. Find one. Negative one. Good. We have a remainder of zero. So that's only synthetic division one time. That brings us to a cubic function. So we want to try it again. So I need another number that works. Negative four. Yep, that looks good. Okay. So, so far we have two zeros identified. Uh, we have negative 1 and we have negative 4. We started off with a uh, degree 4. We've done some data division two times. So now we're at a quadratic level. Is that factorable? Nope. And since it's not factorable, then we're going to have to use the quadratic formula, which, of course, we have memorized, so that's no problem. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. What do you get for your discriminant? 24. And 24 can be reduced because it has a factor of 4, which is the perfect square. So that's going to be negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 is 2 on the outside, 6 left on the inside. And then you'll notice that uh, all three of these values here have a common factor. So we can reduce all of them by that common factor, which is 2. So our, uh, that'll give us negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 6. Uh, all 
these listed up here. You get these are all the actual roots right here. You guess you got to find all of them. Got to find them all. Okay. And that would be, I mean, you would need them if you were going to graph, because you'd have to know all the places where it crossed the x axis. So, yeah, you got to find all of them. Everybody good on 1A and B? Okay. We're going to do some more examples of that today as we uh, have to go over the homework, but you know, we're doing some good practice in with it. Uh, part two, or number two, is uh, a word problem, and you probably did a problem like this back in uh, Altitude with Trig. I think any Altitude Trig prop or book or pre-cal textbook ever written has an uh, open top box problem. It says, a box with an open top is to be made from a 17-inch by 23-inch piece of cardboard, and the way that we're going to make this box is that we're going to cut out squares from each corner and then fold up the sides. So you know, you're starting off with this piece of cardboard. And it says starts as a uh, 17 by 23 piece of cardboard. And the way we're going to form this box is we're going to cut squares out from each corner. And fold up the sides. So I'm going to cut out a square from this corner, cut out a square from this corner, cut out a square from this corner, and then from this corner. And then once we've done that, then now here's what our piece of cardboard looks like. And then we'll fold up the sides, and it's going to form this rectangular box that doesn't have a top one. Somebody, can anybody see that? Can you, can you visualize that? If we cut out those corners, then I'm going to take this side and fold it up, and this side and fold it up, and this side fold it up, and this side fold it up, and now the, uh, all those corners will match up, and you'll have this box right here. Uh, it says to find X, and I probably should have... Uh, improve my wording just a little bit, but uh, when we cut out these squares, these squares are going to have side length of x. We don't know how far to cut in. In fact, you know, depending on how far we cut in, that's going to kind of change the shape of the box. If we were to cut way in, cut a huge or a large square out of each corner, then now we're probably going to have a really tall box that's pretty skinny. If I don't cut in, like a, you know, in this example, I don't go in very far at all, then this is going to be um, a real wide box, but it's not going to be very deep. So the, the size of the box will change depending on the value of x. What I want is I want to form a box that has a volume of 250 cubic inches. So we're dealing with volume. How do you find the volume of a box? Right, length times width times height. But I want to convert all of that over to be in terms of x, because it says, find x such that the volume of the box is 250. So originally, our length it was two, or 23 inches. Okay? So this entire side from here to here was 23 inches. But it's no longer. Once I fold up these sides, the length's actually going to go from here to here. So what would be an expression for that blue line? 23 minus 2x. Yeah, 23 minus 2x. I can take what I had originally and subtract out the x on each side that is going to go away when I cut out those corners. So our length will be 23 minus 2x. Same thing for the width. Our width now is going to go from here to here. <laughs> There. And what's going to be the new width that we're going to have? 17 minus 2x. And then finally, the height, you know, as I fold up these sides, what's going to become the height? X. Right? So we have an expression for the length, for the width, and for the height. 
And what I know is I want this volume to be 250 cubic inches. Well, if I go ahead and just multiply all this out, I'm going to end up with a polynomial. So let's do 23 times 17. 391. And then notice I'm going to distribute the x in. So 23 times 17 is 391. Distribute the x in. You get 391x. Then I have negative 46x and negative 34x, which would give me negative 80, right? Yeah, negative 80x, and then multiplied by x to be negative 80x squared. And then negative 2x times negative 2x would be a positive 4x squared times x would be positive 4x cubed. And so there's what we've gotten in multiplying out the length times the width times the height. And now we're dealing with a polynomial equation, uh, and one that you know is similar to problems that we've done already. What I'll do is I'll set it equal to zero. Wait, what about the thing you raised to? I did negative, or 23 times negative 2x was negative 46, and then negative 2 times 8, so that gave me that negative 8. So I have 4x cubed minus 80x squared plus 391x minus 250, I've set it equal to zero. And the reason for setting it equal to zero is now I'm actually trying to find the zeros, the roots of this polynomial. Okay. So I multiplied it out, set it equal to the volume that I wanted, but now it's just like parts A and B on number one, where I was just trying to solve that polynomial. Now, maybe not quite as easy, if I were going to list the possible rational roots, I would list all the factors of 250, then all the factors of 4, and then I would take all the factors of 250, I put them over all the factors of 4. That's 1 over 1, 2 over 1, 4 over 1, 5 over 1, 10 over 1. I don't want to do this anymore. Right, because I'm probably going to end up with some outrageous number of possible rational roots, 40 or 50 rational roots. Go all those over one, and i got to do all of them over two, and all of them over four. That's, that's going to get to be a lot. So, uh, how can I solve this without having to actually list all the rational roots? What can we do? Hey, graph it. All right. And we have our calculator to help us. So we're going to put this in the calculator. I would never expect you to solve that by hand without a calculator. That would be cruel and unusual punishment. And as long as it was only cruel, it'd be fun. But with it also being unusual, then I won't make you do that. And what are we looking for? X intercept, right. Because you notice this is set equal to zero. And I subtracted that 250 over. So I want to see where it crosses the x-axis. Uh, Alright, so if you're looking at your graph, I see on Sadia's graph where it crosses the x-axis twice. Do you see that? And how are we going to calculate those? Okay, yeah, we can find the zeros. I mean, the first one, what does it look like? It looks like it might be near 1, but the calculator is going to give us the actual value, the decimal value. So we're going to go second calculate on that top row of buttons. And then down to number 2, which is a 0. And then you notice how it looks like it's around 1. So when the calculator asks for a left bound, you can just type in 0. Just hit 0 and hit enter. And then it'll ask for a right bound, and I think 2 would be a good right bound, so just type in 2 and hit enter. If you want to scroll, you can, but you can just type the numbers in. And you'll notice it puts little arrows at the top of your screen. And you want to make sure that the zero you're trying to find is between those arrows. Uh, it lasts for a guess. I have no idea why, so you hit enter. 
and it looks like that that zero is at 0 0.7502250. Is that 0.75? I mean, is that three fourths? Approximately, but probably not exactly, right? So I don't want you to think, oh, I'll just do synthetic division with three fourths and I'm going to get a remainder of zero. Probably not. Okay, because it's not exactly three fourths. So what we've had to do here is we've had to kind of round a little bit. And so one value of x, we're going to say is 0 0.750. But there's another one. So calculate the other one. It looks to me that it's between 6 and 7. So a second calculate. A 0. Good left bound. We could just say 5. And then a good right bound might be eight. And hit enter for guess. And 6.570. I wonder if there's any others. I mean, is it possible? It's possible, right? Just, I mean, our calculator is only showing us from negative 10 to 10. So go to your window and let's change our. Hey, do you care about any negative x's in this problem? No. no, because x represents a distance. So I don't need to extend x any further in the negative direction because I don't care if it goes any if there's any answers over there. So let's just go in the positive direction. You can extend it as far as you want. If you want to go 25 or 50 or 100, doesn't matter. Were there any others? But also, okay, when I graphed it, like it wasn't like my equation when I put it in, I got to make sure it was exact. Okay. Okay. How many was there another answer? I it, it might be I think you went too far. All right, calculate that third answer. We want, to, we want to have all the answers. I mean, if there's multiple answers, we need all of them. So calculate that third answer. And what would it be? 12.679. If you win, two. Yeah, 100 won't really show it. So, yeah, 25 should show all three. Yeah, so when you graph it, it you know, that, for that second zero, it looks like it crosses somewhere between six and seven. So you know, second calculated zero. And then for the left bound, if it looks like it's between six and seven, just to be safe, let's choose five. Okay? And then for the right bound, let's choose eight, because we know that's going to be on the left and the right. It's going to sandwich that. Just in there. And then it should tell you that's it. Right, so we have three answers. Okay? That means that there's really three different boxes supposedly, that would give us a volume of 250 inches, cubic inches, right? Because that's what we were trying to find, the value of x that would give us uh, a box that has a volume of 250 cubic inches. In other words, how far we should cut in to get a box that's going to have those, uh, that specific volume. Except one of those answers I don't feel real good about. Which one? 
12.679. Why can what's wrong with that? Yeah, what, remember we're cutting in on both sides. Right? That value of x. Can you cut in 12 inches this way and 12 inches that way? Now what's gonna happen? You have to cut the whole side off, right? So, and the same thing would happen if you try to do 12.679 on the lake. So, that's not going to work. Okay, so we can eliminate that answer. Even though it would be a zero for this polynomial, in the context of this problem, that's not a possible answer. 6.57 would work because if I cut in 6 inches, I think I'd still have a box left, right? or at least I have a portion of that width left. In fact, I think if we cut in 6.57 inches on each side, then we're really cutting in, and we're only going to leave about 4 inches. So that's going to be a really skinny but really tall box. Okay? So, But that could have a volume of 250 cubic inches. This one, 0.75, we're only cutting in a really small amount, so it's going to be a really wide and long box, but not very deep at all. Okay? So we found two different boxes that have different shapes, but both of them would have a volume of 250 cubic inches. Okay? So if you work for a shipping company and you wanted to produce boxes that could hold 250 cubic inches, you might want to produce two different sizes, because some people might want to mail... Um, I don't know, something that's like a long tube of stuff. And then some people might want to mail something that has a, that's kind of really spread out. So they want to mail like a blanket or something. So they want to be able to spread it out. I don't know if you're just making that up. But you have these different shapes. They still would have the same volume. Okay, you see where it crosses the x-axis, right? your wind, we do like zoom 6, and I would change it to your standard window. And you should see that one time it crosses between 0 and 1. You see that? Okay. So then you're going to hit second, calculate, which is above trace in the top row, and select 0, number 2. And then it's going to ask you for a left bound and a right bound. So if it looks like it crosses between 0 and 1, a left bound could be 0, and a right bound could be 1. You type in 0, hit enter, 1, hit enter, and then for guess, you just hit enter, and then it'll tell you what that 0 is. Right? And then this one looks like it crosses between 6 and 7, so we'll do the same thing, but our left bound will be 6, and our right bound will be 7. Right? And then we would have to extend that window out to see if there's any others, and we, there was one, but we ruled it out. Right? Everybody good on that problem? All right, then take out your homework. Uh, this is the homework from Wednesday night. So let's do this in stages here. The, the first page of homework was page 194. Did you have any questions from page 194? Yep. All right, 107 part B.
right, what I'm saying, I gave you the function of the polynomial g of x equals, and it's written in factors form for you, uh, x plus 3 squared and x minus 2. And we'll go ahead and do part A. Part A said to identify the x-intercepts of the graph of g. And that, that's pretty easy here because this is written in factor form for you. So if you're finding the x-intercepts, you're just finding what's going to make uh, g of x zero or y zero. So what would those x-intercepts be? Yeah, negative three and then positive two. Okay. Then in part B, it says, what are the x-intercepts of this graph? Well, what does this notation indicate that we're going to do to the original graph? Okay, we can replace all the x's with x plus 3. And graphically, what does it mean we're doing? Okay, you're moving at 3 units to the left, right? Everything's going to get shifted three units to the left, including the x-intercepts. So if we have an x-intercept at negative three, when I shift that three units to the left, it's going to be at negative six. If I had an x-intercept at two and shifted three units to the left, it's now going to be at negative one. Okay. We'd have gotten the same thing if we did where we replaced the x's with x plus three. So now that means I would have x plus 3 plus 3 squared and x plus 3 minus 2. I've replaced these x's with x plus 3. So what I really have is x plus 6 squared and x plus 1. And you can see that your x-intercepts are at negative 6 and negative 1. Okay. Any other questions on page 194? Alright, then the next page of homework was back in the appendix. So that was A34. Any questions from that page? 27. Alright, this is A34, number 27. And it says, find the sum of A, B, C, and D given this. So we have uh, x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3x plus 5 divided by x plus 2. And they tell you that's equal to ax squared plus bx plus c plus d over x plus 2. So in other words, what they've done is they divided this and here's what you get. They want you to add A, B, C, and D. So let's actually perform this division, which we can do either by long division or can we use synthetic division? Yeah, because we're dividing by a linear binomial. So I'm going to choose synthetic. Unless you really want me to do long. Okay, good. All right, what goes in the little box? Negative two. And we list out these coefficients. We get a remainder of negative 17, right? So that means that when I perform this division, I have 1x one one squared minus 4x plus 11 plus negative 17 over x plus 2. So here are the values of a, b, c, and d. And it asks you to find the sum of those values. So 1 plus negative 4 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 11 is 8. 8 plus negative 17 is negative 9. So negative 9 would be the sum. Any other questions on A34? Okay, okay. 23? All right, 23. Uh, use synthetic division to determine whether x minus c is a factor of the polynomial. Uh, we know from our factor theorem that if it is a factor of the polynomial, then our uh, remainder would be zero from division. So I have 
four uh, x to the six on a sixty four x to the four plus x squared minus fifteen. And I want to know if x plus four is a factor of this polynomial. So what's going to go in this little box? Negative four. Then we're going to list out our coefficients. There's no x to the fifth term, so I need a zero. There's no x cubed term, so I need a zero. There's no x term, so I need a zero. And then I'll do this in fact division. Remainder of zero, and so therefore, no, that is not a factor. Okay. Any other questions on A34? All right, then the third page was page 209, and do you have any questions from page 209? <laughs> All right, 93 says one solution to this equation, x cubed uh, minus 8x squared plus 16x minus 3 equals 0. One solution to that equation is 3, and I want to find the remaining solutions. How can I use 3 to find any other uh, remaining uh, solutions or zeros? Um, you just to get to Good. So I can do some data division with three. If I know three is a solution and this, this equation is equal to zero, if I know it's a solution, that means that when I do some data division, I've got to get a remainder of zero. Right? So. Yep, we do get a remainder of zero. And in fact, now we're uh, at this quadratic level. We've done synthetic division one time, starting with the degree three. I believe that's factorable. Okay. So now what do we do? Quadratic formula. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Hey, Nick, will you go and put yourself in proper uniform, please? Uh, what do we get for our discriminant? We're at 21. And... So we have all of our solutions. We have how many solutions do we have? Three. Three. Okay. We have three. That was the solution that they gave us. I don't know why that's not good We have three as a solution. We have five plus the square root of twenty-one over two as a solution. And then five minus the square root of twenty-one as a solution. And I want to add all those together. Okay. Well, it's not really as bad as it might look. We're going to take 3 plus 5 plus the square root of 21 over 2 plus 5 minus the square root of 21 over 2. These last two expressions have a common denominator, so can't we add those together? If I add across the numerator, what's going to happen? We get 10 over 2, right? 10 over 2 is 5, and then 5. Oh, find the sum of the remaining solutions. So we don't have to worry about the 3. 
Yeah, so then when we add those together, we just get 5. So there would be the sum of those. So just, the square root of 21 is canceled. Any other questions on page 2, Tim? Everybody good? All right. And let's look at a few more examples of um, finding the zeros of polynomials. I want you to list all the possible rational rigs, please, before you go and actually find the zeros. You're trying these three. I mean, you may not be done, but uh, I want to go ahead and just get some of these answers up here before the end of the block. Um, and number one, you know, you listed the ra I want you to be able to list the possible rational roots. So there were a bunch of them in number one uh, because 65 has a lot of factors. Uh, Let's see, what, 1 goes into 65, what else does? 5 does, 13, and 65. Okay, well, let's have that many. I guess just 4. And then you'll take each of those and put them over 1, and then put them over 2. So I guess you'll probably have about, what would that be, like 16 different numbers to try when you include the positive and negative. What, what's one that worked? Uh, okay, so you can do five, and uh, that would give you one zero. How many times do you have to do some kind of division? Twice. How many times? Twice. So, what was the second number that you might have used? One half. One half. Not one half. 
one half. Okay, yeah. And then you were at that point you were at a quadratic, and did it factor or did you have to use quadratic formula? Quadratic. Have you used quadratic formula and what'd you get? <coughs> Two i over that's it. So negative three plus or minus two i. Is everybody okay with that, or do you want me to do any part of that? Yeah. So you got you were good on five and one half. All right. So let me kind of skip through. formula and that would be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 a is 1 now that I've taken that GCF out <coughs> all over 2 times 1 uh, what do you get for your discriminant negative Negative 16, uh, I mean, sorry, negative 16. Am I good with that? Well, what's the square root of negative 16? 4i. Four. Four so we have negative 6 plus or minus 4i over 2. We take the i out because of the negative under the square root, and the square root of 16 is 4. And then you'll notice that all three of those terms have a common factor of 2, so we can reduce them all by 2. So that's going to be negative 3 plus or minus 2i over 1. So negative 3 plus or minus 2i. Good old man. All right. Uh, the trick to number 2 was what? Right. 1 was your 0, but it had a multiplicity of 3. Okay. So we had to test it three or use it three times in synthetic division. Right. And if we do that... And we'll do some data division three times, and I'm going to assume that you can do that correctly. So after you've done some data division three times, what's the quadratic that results? X squared plus nine. Plus nine? Okay. Is that factorable? Nope. So we'll just subtract the nine over, take the square root. And we get x equals plus or minus 3i. So our zeros would be, or our roots would be 1. And I want you to label the multiplicity. So 1 with a multiplicity of 3, and then plus or minus 3i. Okay. Make sure you indicate that there is a multiple, it's a multiple zero. Because on your homework tonight, or, or over the weekend, 
there's going to be a couple problems where you're actually going to graph the polynomial. It's going to be those weird instructions where it says something like analyze this polynomial, like example three on page whatever. But all that is is just graph the polynomial. All the ones that we've done previously when we've graphed, we've, uh, it's been presented to us in factored form. But now I can present it to you in non-factored form, in standard form. First step is to find the x-intercepts. Well, that's what you'd have to do. Use the theta division, all that. You have your x-intercepts. You can find your y-intercept by just plugging in 0 for x. You can find your end behavior because you know the biggest exponent, the leading coefficient. And then you can put all that together with some test points and actually draw the graph. Okay? And knowing that multiplicity would be important because what's the graph going to look like as it goes through 1 for this particular polynomial? Like a cubic function. Right, as opposed to just that straight line. Okay. And then what was the trick for number three? Or did you get there? Yeah, the, the, you could try synthetic division, but actually this is four terms and grouping would work. Okay. So we could, if we're trying to find the zeros, the roots will set equal to zero, and we'll group the first two terms together, and the second two terms together. What uh, what's the common factor in the first two groupings? Right. And you're left with x squared plus one. And the common factor here? And you're left with x squared plus one. Grouping's going to work. And you're left with x squared plus 1 times x cubed plus 8. And what do you notice about x cubed plus 8? It's a sum of two perfect cubes, so we can factor it further. So we really didn't have to do some that division at all with this, because we could have just done factoring from the very beginning. So we get the, take the cubic root of each term, and then we'll use SOPs to find the trinomial. trinomial any further? No. Can we back to this x squared plus 1? No. Um, so our only real number of 0 is negative 2. Which means we could have done synthetic division one time with negative 2, but we might have been stuck at that point and not really sure where to go from there. So, but luckily we recognize that we could start with four terms as grouping, and it worked for us. Uh, so there's one zero, but we got to find, it's said to find the roots, so we got to find all of our imaginary zeros as well. So that means I need to know when does x squared plus 1 equals 0? That's going to be when x squared equals negative 1, or when x equals the square root of negative 1, and what does that become? All right. And then I also need to know when x squared minus 2x plus 4 equals 0. I know it's going to give me imaginary solutions, but I've got to include them this time. Uh, sometimes in the past we've just ignored it, but we do need our imaginary solutions, so I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And for that discriminant, what do we get? Negative 12. Negative 12. Uh, a factor of 12 would be 4. So that's going to be plus or minus 2i on the square root of 3 all over 2. And then we can reduce it because 3 or 2 goes into all three of those values. So we'll get 1 plus or minus i on the square root of 3. And there would be our zeros for that part. So we can't forget methods of factoring when we need to use those or when we can use those. Okay? Uh, here's your homework to practice with all of this.
few of them are going to ask you to grab. So you're going to have to go through all those steps of finding the x intercept and the specific division, and the y intercept, the behavior, test points, and right. Quiz on Monday, test on Thursday. These five functions project is Monday. Everybody got the homework done?